and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fabulous to have you here. I got in bright and early, and the first thing that I did, you remember I made hammers with Mike. We also made an, a, a Damascus ice hockey puck. Mike, t-shirt competition winner. Well, I put the handles on his hammers first thing this morning. Let's roll the clip. Of course, now that those hammers have been handled and his t-shirts, his merchandise, the hammers, the puck, are all packaged off and are ready to go off to him, I have lit the forge. This is the mosaic Damascus that's going to be part of our 500,000 layer Damascus steel katana. Here is the 500,000 layer billet. We're going to forge weld this together. We're then going to forge weld it to this. It's going to be a great day. Thank you for joining me. And so this will go into the fire. And if you're new to the channel, you're probably wondering why is this British kid wearing a cowboy hat? Um, well, this is not going to explain it, but a uh, little fun note. You remember the other day? I made myself a uh, hat rack for the truck there. Isn't that, isn't that lovely? Well, last night as I was driving home from the workshop, the same day we made it, because we made two videos yesterday, my hat fell uh, fell down half a mile away from the workshop. So indeed, I have some work to do on that hat rack at some point. For now, however, back to Damascus. <laughs> Steel. We have welded the mosaics together in the ferry flip or Felicietti flip, whatever you want to call it. We've welded that together with the 45 degree angle. Thank you, Rad Knives. And that worked pretty well. Welded nice and easily, welded together neatly, but of course, we still had to grind out the welds. So we went to the grinding room, we ground out the welds, and then, of course, we made sure that it's all nice and clean and perfect. There are no more welds left in it, and now it's back in the fire. We're going to make sure that it's nice and, uh, and neat and rectangular so that we can bring our 500,000 layer Damascus billet down to the same size, weld it together before forging the blade. So, these pieces have been forged down. That's our 500,000 layer Damascus billet. This is our stars, and we're going to cut them to the same size in the bandsaw. <laughs> so, 
So Jamie has just had a fantastic idea. I was planning to put the stars across the bottom, the 500,000 layer Damascus billet across the top, but Jamie thought about the idea of sandwiching the stars in the 500,000 layer Damascus billet. And what are we gonna try and do is see how quick I can cut down the piece of steel with a saw. Now this is not the billet of steel, this is a piece of mild steel, but I've never used a saw on a mill, so I wanna give it a go and uh, see how quick it is. If this doesn't work well, then we'll go to the forge, we'll forge it out and then just simply grind it. But this could be a nice way of getting a beautifully clean cut the whole way across the length and a nice way to try something new and learn another technique. So as you can tell, indeed, that has been a miserable failure. Too much feed uh, then made it shatter after stripping teeth. So I still have some edumacating to do with one of those milling machine cutters. For now, however, as time is indeed of the essence so that we can forge this katana. I am indeed gonna forge this down half the width, that'll double the length, and then we can grind this. While it's cooling, we're gonna grind this. This is gonna go in the middle of the two pieces. Once the long piece of steel, the 500,000 layer steel, was forged and cooling down, we milled two sides on the stars, we cut the 500,000 layer... Jamie, this is gonna be in a million layer sword. As you will notice, all of the sides that are now touching have been milled clean and I have tack welded it with a TIG welder so it all stays together. I also did a tiny tack weld in the middle because as it heats up, those pieces on either side will expand and of course because they're tack welded on the end, they'll want to bow out. So that middle tack weld helps a lot. And since we've got some time, a Mr. Bruce Fong on Facebook, the other day we went to Facebook and Instagram, you can follow me on Instagram at Alex Steele, oh yes. We went to Facebook and Instagram asking for some questions so we could do some answers too. And Bruce Fong has asked, what do I miss about my old workshop and what are the improvements that I'll be making in here? The first problem with this workshop is I've got to walk like 10 miles a day to get from one side to the other. So if I'm over here at the mill and I need a new battery for my camera, 
I've got to run all the way over here. So that's a slight problem. I've got to do a lot of walking in this workshop. Now, having all that space does have its perks. It means I have a knife throwing range and I can have way more bits of machinery and way more tools. But the other downside of all this space is it sometimes looks a little, uh, little surgical, a little bland. There was something to say about the beautiful, crammed in, cluttered nature of my old workshop cinematically. Cinematically, this workshop needs some work. Everything is white and a little stale. We need some more color. I think that I need to have boards where I have tools hung onto the boards. I need shelves, I need stuff on the walls. In fact, there off camera, Jamie suggested maybe have somebody paint a mural. That might be pretty cool. Sparks flying everywhere in the background. Projects that I've completed should be on the walls. I need to fill these walls up a little bit. Pros and cons to it all. Overall, do I regret the big workshop? Absolutely not. Love this place and it is, uh, it is very exciting to have moved up from the Barker Street Forge. So we are ready to forge weld these pieces together. The power hammer's running. We'll start off nice and gentle. I only give it just a few blows before it's back in the fire. This is the most critical forge weld of the entire project. It's got to be right. We've got to take our time. There's a big issue and problem I'm dealing with right now. You see these, this is where it is not properly welded. These are cracks, we're just at the edge of it. The weld doesn't properly take. So this is why I ground it. I wanted to make sure that these cracks were all the way out of there. You saw I ground the other side. About 90, 95% of all of that cracking is out. And I think that the other side is gonna be all good with some more forge welding as part of the process of forging the katana. We're coming now onto our second side to just double check, see if we can grind through all the cracking, get rid of those little TIG welds that we did in the middle and make this all ready to forge our, well, I guess, million layer Damascus steel katana. We have grounded, I'm a little nervous, that side that I did, that back side, uh, it's not as good as the first side, not as clean, the cracks are still there, we're going to have to see how it goes. First and foremost though, because it's ground, I thought we might as well take the opportunity to give it an etch and see how it looks, because I have no clue how this is going to look. Oh, that's so cool. Oh my goodness. Guys, oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, this is so cool. These splotches of pattern, it looks amazing. This is going to be so good on the sword. Watch this is drawn out. Make sure that if you are new to the channel, you hit subscribe because this is going to be one of the best series yet. This is the most challenging project that I've undertaken, so make sure you join us for the journey. Make sure you go and make something in your own workshops. Get some merchandise, drop a comment, leave a like. I'll see you tomorrow on the next episode. It's going to be an absolute blast.